So basically, cost estimating, like Glenn was talking about, can happen at various levels. Um, you'd be surprised to find that this is not just for academic purposes, but actually in real world construction on really big projects. People make fuzzy estimates that often go wrong, which is, well, which underpins the construction industry and why so many construction firms go under all the time. Um, for example, this summer I was working in a project that they bid for a certain number of feet, linear feet of tunneling that they were capable of doing. They bid it at around 100. They came in at around 42 after four years of tunneling. So they lost like a ton of money on that. So it happens all the time. So make sure that your construction estimates that you're doing, you should have a good feel for what you're doing. Because most of this data that you're talking about is either vague or not exactly suited to your local conditions. And experience generally helps in estimating much better. So books like RS Means, and I'm going to show the online version of the same. Um, so their website is Costworks. And you can go ahead and create for a get a new trial, right? So this is available online. And it's much better to do it online because you won't have to search through that book uh, for various um, materials. So you can sign up for this. You will need a new email ID every time you do that for seven days. I've created about 13 now over the last year. So keep going ahead, create spurious email IDs. Yeah, you had a question? No? All right. This is my last one. And yes. Yeah, that was it. Okay. India. Oh. Long time ago. See, <laughs> old email IDs come in very handy when you're doing this. So once you sign in, it's going to take you to this kind of thing. And you can have for seven limited days. You can have your own uh, online account with all your cost estimation stuff in there. So what is most useful in this is this, the cost books online, which is basically what is being passed around the online version, the searchable version of it. So go ahead, select that. And it will open up this, um, basically, what is in that book. There's a lot of numbers here, usually. And this is the data that you will be uh, using. There are two kinds of formats for costing. The one is called master format and uniformat. These are construction industry standards. Usually what happens with standards is there are like 10 of them, and somebody decides, oh, I have to have this uniting standard for everything else. And then there are 11 of them at the end of that. So that's how this works. Um, you, have, uh, you can have like what kind of data type you want. Do you want it by assembly? Like if, if you're talking about steel framing, it come, it, you can either cost it like a whole assembly. Or you can take each individual steel piece and then cost it by weight, which is usually what happens in the case of steel. You say, OK, I have so many pounds of steel, such strength and such and such uh, quality, so I'm going to price it at so much. And then there's, in each case, you're going to have labor and so on and so forth. So you have to select what type of labor you're using. This is very important, because if you're working in environments like if you place your building in, say, Boston or New York, you need to work with union labor, which costs like twice to two, two and a half times as much as normal open shop labor. right? And uh, uh, many people ignore this. A lot of out of town companies come in thinking that, OK, we're going to underbid everybody. And then they realize they have to pay out labor charges, and they just go broke on that. So make sure that you get that right. So uh, let's take an example of something that is common. Say, oh, finishes, OK. Uh, help me, Mac. Oh, come on. And something seems to not be working here. All right, let's take something else meanwhile. Mm. Why is it doing that? Hmm. 
Okay, for some reason it refuses to open what was being opened last, like in the past five minutes. So usually when you go into one of these menus and select one of the items, what happens is you will get the description of the item, a unit, and crew, daily output, labor hours, bare materials, there's bare labor and bare total. The, the reason it's called bare is because it's without the overhead and profit. They usually have overhead and profits added uh, in other ways. Why isn't this opening up? No, it's definitely not the Mac issues. Why is that doing it? Probably. Zero three three oh five three. It's not responding for some reason. Well, that always happens. All right, for some reason this is not responding right now, but if you just made a fake ID right now and just signed up, you'd probably see it working. Not respond. Tell, tell us what it is going to show. Have to All right. So it. anyway, we'll we'll skip that part. Like I'm sorry, I'm not able to demonstrate. As you know, Murphy's law suggests that it will fail. It failed. Um, so you can use this kind of data. Usually the units are, for example, concrete. You usually deal with in cubic yards. So you have a unit of cubic yards, and then the crew would be outlined in here. So you can go ahead and select your crew, which brings up this. Since we wanted, OK, year 2011, we we're going for standard union type crews. It'll bring up a PDF file suggesting what are crews made up of in each case. For example, concrete workers consist of different crews. You'll have steel workers having different crews, and so on and so forth. Painters need not have you know, iron workers. And the reason this is important is because unions are organized in this way. So you'll have different members being paid different amounts. And you have the daily wages and hourly wages and so on. So you can estimate whatever costs you need for material, labor, and equipment for whatever comes out of your model. Right? Um, hey, 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 this is kind of like rapid. Yeah. If, if they were just going to try to get like a, uh, an aggregate figure for like an EISS wall assembly or something like that, as opposed to getting into the detail, okay. how so would they do something like that? So without going into too much detail, if you just wanted uh, different assemblies. Usually, you'll find a description here, and then you just need to find out what's your quantity in uh, units. It, it, it either comes as cubic yards or whatever. Like, for example, concrete. You have an overall volume, and you can go ahead and estimate how much it's going to cost you based on this number. Note that this is RS means, which basically means this is a national average data. So you might want to adjust it for Palo Alto or Kansas City, as Glenn was saying. And the other way of going about and doing this is called a square foot estimator. This is the rule of thumb kind of estimate that you do. Uh, you can put in different locations and um, whatever you need to put in, it, the area of the building and so on. And it will give you a, a very vague first first pass estimate of what your cost is going to be. So these are the two ways you can go about it. Yeah, George. How do you adjust the control I'm sorry, I can't. Um, no, this does not usually give you uh, information by zip code because, A, first of all, you're on the free trial version, so you don't have access to limited uh, data that you can purchase online. But usually, you can get a feel for what the cost would be by uh, finding out local prices. If you look for rents, like housing rents and so on, they're priced accordingly. So that same variation happens in costs of construction. Hey, isn't in, in the book, isn't there uh, like a table of the adjustment factors based on? Zip there is one in the appendix in the actual book. You do not find it in the free trial online no version. No worries. So then what you might want to do is, uh, for the purpose of just kind of getting what your adjustment factor is, go to the book and look it up what it is you know, for the zip code where you're locating the building. And then you'll have it available for you. So you can kind of factor all the online costs with that. And that's about the easiest way of going about getting estimates from this. Right. So in terms of working with it, is it easier to search for things? Like if I was going to try and find the IFS wall, nope, I know that it's not working for you right now. But 
But is it generally better to just try searching based on different descriptions? Or? The advantage of having it online is the search ability. So you can go ahead and say, suppose you wanted a, a gypsum board wall. You can just type in gypsum board, and it'll bring out a host of options about what all involves gypsum board. And then you can go ahead and pick and choose which one you want. So there's a lot of types of materials and uh, equipment and labor that's listed here. If you have something that's non-standard, you have to just guess based on what's the closest you know, approximation for that and go ahead from there. Yeah. So then is the data that's here the same data that's in the book? The, the, da the data that's here is the same data that is in the book. So the 2011 book, the latest one, which costs about $110, if you're really interested in getting it, will have the same data. Okay, good. Thank you. Right. I guess not to get started, it's really just if you want to get access to the data, or you really only need like six different data values or something like that, so different types of wall and roof assemblies and stuff like that, that's kind of a quickie way to get here if you don't want to go dig into the book for it. You have a question, please? Uh, can you use like older versions of the book? Or if you yeah. The older versions, the, the numbers don't change by as much. It's usually a rate of inflation, escalation is called, and that's not much. It's like 1% or 2%. You can usually use the older ones. For the project? For the project, definitely. I, I, yeah, so for even, you, yeah, you can probably pretty easily figure out what the difference is, like kind of scaling factor between 2008 versus 2011. Or if you're just going to use 2008, put that in your executive summary that this is based on 2008 values and should be scaled uh, for inflation or something like that. But just give the appropriate disclaimer to set the expectations. And if you guys are working in 241, most of the books are there that, that are, I mean, slightly are a little old, so it's a little dated, maybe 2008, 2009. So you can definitely say that that's the best number for you to use. Yeah. How specific is it? So when you're looking at the gypsum board, that's just the gypsum board, it's all two by four. It gets pretty specific. The book uh, yeah. gets whatever you need. People tell you how to do that. I think. That, that's where you go after the assemblies. Right. You have to kind of, if you'll find an assembly which is a two by four stud wall with gypsum board on the inside and stucco on the outside. And you, you want to try and find that that has the integrated cost. Mm -hmm. As opposed that's to getting. Really more general than getting into each bit and then figuring out how much it takes Hello? to put them together. Okay, excellent. Thank you, sir. Okay, I want to finish you up. Oh, you did great. Don't worry. I got all these tails on the Of course. I'm, I'm used to that by now. <laughs>